Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, just when you thought the budget was over, the state budget, is it over? No, it is not. What's that all about? Well, you'll find out in a moment or two, and then we have a couple of the state's leading business leaders in to give their impressions, to get their thoughts on the budget. Is it finished? We'll be back following these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Well, just when you thought it was over, it is not. The uh, infamous uh, budget battle, or stalemate, I guess, of uh, 2009, 2010, I think I got that right, is still alive and well. Joining me to sort of flesh all of this out are two of the state's leading reporters sitting across from me is Brad Bumstead. He's a columnist and a journalist with a Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Now, okay, you do Twitter and you do, and how if they want to, folks want to read your columns, how's the best way to get them? PittsburghLive.com on the left-hand side, click on columnist. Twitter, just go to Twitter.com and uh, follow B. Bumstead. Follow B. Bumstead, there you go. John Mysick, he's with the Allentown Morning Call. Now, John, you Twitter, you have a blog. G g t take us through these. Yep, the, uh, the blog is Capital Ideas. You can find it on the Morning Call's website. It's, uh, capital, it's capital Ideas, but there's a blog link there. Uh, Twitter, you can find me at, at capital underscore ideas. At capital score underscore ideas. Capital idea. underscore ideas. Got it. All right, guys, let's get down to it. The, the, as everybody in the state knows, a budget has been passed, but not completely Brad Bumstead. What's left out there undone? Well, there are two major things left undone, and they may be hooked together, and that is uh, uh, table games and legalizing table games at casinos uh, accounts for about $200 million in the budget. Uh, they were unable to reach agreement on table games, so they passed the budget without table games, mm -hmm. and then Governor Ed Rendell and the House Democrats decided to hold back uh, funding for the so-called non-preferreds, which are uh, state-related universities. Right. It's Pitt, Penn State, Penn State, Temple, and Lincoln universities. Now, wait a minute. Hold plus on. Plus some others. They held up Penn State's... Now, yeah. a lot of things you Penn can State's do in this funding state, is right? Being held up for gaming. <laughs> for, ga for gaming. Now, John, a lot of things you can hold up in this state, right? Penn State funding. Do legislators take the li their it's political it's lives it's in their hands kind of by like doing putting, this? It is kind of like putting a lien on the Vatican, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you know, it, is, it is a politically risky thing to do. And I was talking with some Penn State kids you know, yesterday yeah. who are not particularly thrilled at the prospect of being held hostage to yeah. Harrisburg. No one wants Third to say, hostage, right? No, Third yeah. set of hostages. No one wants to say that Penn State is being held hostage, but that, in fact, is it's, what, it's what's happening. You're mm -hmm. talking about a $350 million appropriation for Penn State and something like $700 million yeah. in total for all, of the, right. for all 28 of the so-called non-preferreds. Um, you know, what they're trying to come to agreement on here is the, the tax rates and the upfront licensing fees the casino operators will have to, pl uh, will have to pay in order to be allowed to operate table That's games. a once-and-done payment a, to get once, the license, right? Pre precisely. Um, Senate Republicans have a preference. They want 14%, 12% for the state, 2% mm -hmm. local, and a $10 million licensing fee. Right. Democrats are talking about a 34% taxing rate and a $20 million licensing fee. And just yesterday, we learned that Governor Rundell prefers a 16% taxing rate and a $15 million licensing fee. So he's cut the, uh, he's so, cut the baby so, right in the yeah, middle. Yeah, I was going to say, Brad, that looks like a, a reasonable compromise from their points of view, the two extremes, correct? What it would you? seem, but the, the House, through Democratic spokesmen, seem to be in no hurry whatsoever to get back and do this, whether that's just budget fatigue and people need to catch up or whether this is indeed a, the third hostage taking uh, remains to be seen. Now, let me get this straight. The House is not scheduled to come back until November 9th, which would be a week after the municipal elections, correct? That's correct, although they are on call. What's that? And, well, well, that means that if they would strike a deal on table games, they could be brought back. You know, sooner. Than Does that. anyone really expect them to? They don't absolutely have to have the tax money to f run the budget. Now, you, Senator Corman has spoken on this on a number of occasions. He's the chairman of the Senate Appropriation yeah, Committee. Senator Go Corman ahead. from Center County, whose district, in fact, includes Penn State Penn University. State, in, a, in a nice, sure, this in, makes him happy. In a right nice now. And I'm he, sure it was a coincidence. <laughs> a coincidence. He doesn't yeah. believe that funding for the non-preferreds have to be held up. He says there's enough money in surplus coming out of the budget that they can, in fact, operate without doing this. Um, so it seems a lot like a political ploy. What's weird, though, is there is now that everyone is back, it's, you know, it's a week or so after after the budget. Um, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of urgency. So I wonder now. Yeah. I mean, 
you, you pointed out before we went on air that in, in 1977, it was near Christmas before right. funding for the non preferreds were, were finally approved in that particular budget stalemate. So one wonders now if they're going to spend all of this time talking about what the tax rate should be and jockeying back and forth. All right, we're going to, we're going to break, but uh, they're in no hurry, it appears. Is, it that, appears. A fair, is that a fair yeah. sentiment from you guys? Okay. N not in a big hurry, right? Not in a big hurry, and also downplaying the uh, importance of passing the non-preferred. -prefer All right, there you have it. Uh, continued budget updates uh, following these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is sponsored by Citizens to Protect PA Jobs. When businesses add jobs, people prosper. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by PAConstructionJobs.com. For more information about rewarding careers in the highway construction industry, visit PAConstructionJobs.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program with journalists John Meisick and Brad Bumstead. Right. Kind of related to the budget. The budget is done. We'll get with, you know, Fred Anton and, and uh, Gene Barr on. We'll get back to the budget with them. I want to ask you guys, I think, what is truly maybe the big outstanding question. The budget is over. Everyone is waiting to see what the Attorney General of the state of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett, does with bonus gate. In addition to that, he's a candidate for governor, and there's been sort of growing criticism that maybe he ought to step down while he's pursuing bonus gate, other prosecutions of state officials at the same time running for governor. John Meisick, where does all that stand? Um, yeah, the, the widespread expectation, Terry, is once the budget was done, everyone thought that's when maybe Mr. Corbett was going to come out with, uh, with new indictments. Possibly there's a grand jury that's meeting this month, I believe, is supposed mm -hmm. to be wrapping up its work, so everyone's sort of on, on pins and needles now waiting to see what's going to happen next. And it's becoming a, a, a growing political problem for Mr. Corbett as, as Jim Gerlach, the 6th District Republican Congressman from down there in suburban Philly, his, opponent, ramp, ramp, primary his opponent. primary opponent, ramps up his gubernatorial campaign and is ta taking seemingly weekly pot shots at yeah. uh, Mr. Corbett for continuing to, to seek office while, con while conduct this investigation. Go ahead. Well, you know, this is the, the long-awaited next round of indictments. You know, Corbett had talked about this for months, said you know, flatly year, that there is another... In, what, a year and four, three months since the first round, or four months since... Since then, and actually Gene Stilp and the Reformers this coming week will be uh, celebrating the thousand days of bonus gate, you know, that it's gone on that long since the beginning of the investigation. With, uh, now, now, but he has said, look, the Attorney General on this program, and I know you folks have... have covered this story, has said there will be additional indictments, correct? Yes. And the high expectation is that there will be Republicans who are indicted. We now have 12 indictments, 10 Democrats, or, uh, or 12 Democrats, 10 staffers, and two former lawmakers. Do I got that factually right? You, you have that right, and there's no, you know, no doubt that everyone expects Republicans will be part of this. I think they will. I think you know, Corbett has no choice but to do something like that. But I think a lot of this gets blown out of proportion. Now, I think there is a substantial appearance problem for yeah. an attorney general who's a gubernatorial candidate who's going to announce a political corruption case. Right. Whether, in fact, that has anything to do with the validity of the investigation yeah. is another point. But, but, okay. go, go but, but I think that uh, uh, the appearance problem is out there, but in the end, what... Jim Gerlach says about this, I mean, you know, Gerlach, uh, no disrespect intended, but is in the teens in the polls. Mm -hmm. and So you think it's more about the politics of it. John, you have another well, point I mean, of I view. I think what part of the problem, Mr. Corbett sort of created a dilemma for himself by saying, yes, there are going to be more indictments. If, I mean, if you've looked at his public statements since then, he's modulated that back a little bit and said, you know, variations on, I'm going to go where the evidence leads me or... You know, I never said specifically that, will be, that there will be indictments against Republicans. I said there will be more indictments. So mm -hmm. there, ha there has been some, yeah. there have been some but, modulations but, to his but, public comments. Because I think he realized that it created a problem for him because now yeah, everyone is sitting yeah, and waiting saying, yeah. well, when, well, when are you going to yeah. do it? Just, yeah. just, just this uh, you think it's the bit delay as much as any, both of you think it's yeah. the delay. It is absolutely right? the delay. I mean, if he had been able, if the investigation were ready, and he had been able to file charges before he announced for governor, yeah. it would be a lot more comfortable situation for him. Now that he's a gubernatorial candidate, right. people are going to take shots at him like now, crazy. Now, boy. John raises a good point, and be, before we let you go, 
here, here he is. He's the attorney general. He has enormous prosecutorial power, you know, you know, to make and break state politicians, so to speak. Now, admittedly, you're going to do this if they, hopefully if they break the law. That's the whole point. But should he be forced to resign? Should we have a state law that says if you're the treasurer or the auditor general, you know, and, and you want to run for another office, and of all places, Philadelphia, under the city charter, if you seek another office, you have to give up your current office. Should, I mean, is that something at, that at least ought to be thought about, John? What do you, what's your thoughts well, about I mean, that? You know, we were talking a bit, a bit about this before we went on air. If you're a guy like Jack Wagner, the Auditor General, and you're releasing audits that are critical of state government spending, should you have to quit as yeah. Auditor General before you before you seek the governorship, um, or the state treasurer, say, Rob McCord, decides to run for higher office sure. somewhere down the road. I think where it gets problematic for Mr. Corbett is, you know, it's not that he's releasing an, an, an audit that makes somebody uncomfortable, maybe to get, yeah. get a couple of posts from an editorial board, I and mean, he's actually arresting and charging people from who might be political supporters and That's from true. whom he might have taken money but in some, the past. But some audits could lead to investigations of criminal wrongdoing. They could. They could, they could but most of the time they do not, most, right? You agree yeah, with your no. Look, great update. All right. When we come back, we're going to hear from two uh, representatives of the business community, uh, frequent guests on this show, Fred, Fred Anton and Gene Barr. Stay with us, and uh, we'll see you on the other side of this commercial. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. Joining me as often as the case is Fred Anton. He's sitting right here, the CEO of Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. And Gene Barr, he's the Vice President of Government and Public Affairs, the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry. Two business guys, they come here frequently. To All right, Fred, I want to start with you. From the business community's point of view, what do you like about this budget and what don't you like? Well, I want to say first that... My comment on this budget is not so much that it was late, but the way in which the process was handled. Mm -hmm. And I feel extremely critical of the state employees not being paid for a period of time. And I feel more critical of the uh, school districts, counties, and social service mm -hmm. agencies being significantly disrupted. I think it's a major failure yep. of state government. Needless, which, so. Needless, yeah. and it has not been properly focused yeah. on. Yeah. All the focus has been on the 100 days, and none right. of the focus is on the unnecessary disruption. And I believe the legislature should immediately pass a law that the state employees and the uh, other agencies, uh, agencies yeah, be, be funded for the first quarter, that the first yeah. quarter, the... the I get your point. That's a good idea. That Maybe that's an idea worth considering, that, that there should be some continual funding for basic operations when they're not in debate. I mean, no one... Gene, you're right. This, they went into... There was no debate over those aspects. They were going to... Yes, mean, there, yeah, you, yeah, you're exactly Fred, right. Fred I raised mean, a good... Was, go yeah, ahead. it was there. Uh, in terms of the budget itself, as Fred and I and the other folks work this from the business side, look, there's a business tax increase in this. And none of us are doing handstands over the fact that there's a business tax increase. In a, especially in a recession. On the capital stock and franchise tax, absolutely. And it is an increase. Now, on the flip side, we've been asking for some control over the growth of state government for a number of years, and the actual state spend is lower yeah. for this coming year than last. The other thing that it does is, is as Fred and I have talked, this takes a bunch of things off the table. There were proposals that would change certain sales tax exemptions on business-to-business -business transactions. There was a tax on health insurance premiums. Of course, the PIT never got traction, but it took right. that off the table. There were a lot of things out there that this does. So the reality is, and again, as someone pointed out to me, this is like a mirror image in 1991. In 91, we had a billion dollars 
billion dollar deficit and we increased taxes two to three billion to pay for it. Here and we got a three and a half billion deficit and raised taxes about yeah, a billion. Fred, I think, go ahead. I think, I think, it, no, let me get this in and then you can go ahead. I, I could be wrong about this, but I think we could be back here next, next year at this time because they may not have d done one of two things, either cut spending and or raised enough revenues by these new recurring revenues and other taxes. That, is that a possibility? We no, it's a certainty. They uh -oh, haven't raised certainty. revenues sufficiently, and they are betting on the gambling revenues on the come. And they haven't gotten the $200 million in yeah. gambling revenues, and I don't think they're going to be reliable. Let me say, I want to be very critical of one aspect of the budget. It's the $300 million for education that Rendell insisted upon. Now, $123 million of that is going to go to Philadelphia schools. And only uh, the balance of that, $177 million, is going to the 499 in school. school that really was unnecessary. Well, the federal stimulus funds... Uh, uh, makes for the school budgets across the state to be made whole, even with an increase. That was inordinate. You know, let, let's let's hang on this subject for a minute. I mean, normally you'd see a lot of fuss in the legislature over, you know, a disproportionate share to Philadelphia. A, you didn't hear much about that. Maybe it was this deadline and the process and how dysfunctional it had gotten. The other point that Fred raises, and it's a good one, is, Gene, what happens when the stimulus money goes away? Well, that's an excellent point. Now, we have next year that those dollars are there again. So, as Fred says, we could very well be here next year. I hate to say it, that the certainty gets even greater two years from now as we get into to, to pension problems, as we get into the loss of stimulus dollars. And the reality is when you start talking about moving revenues up, and cutting expenses. We cut some expenses, but cutting revenues yeah. from a corporate, we already have the second highest rate in the U.S. We have an unemployment compensation trust fund problem. We're already ninth highest unemployment compensation taxes on employers in the U.S. There's not a lot of room to go in terms of putting more burden yeah. on employers in this state. All right, back in a moment. Budget, budget, and more budget. Are you tired of the budget? I am. <laughs> we're going to move away. I, I promised last week we were going to move away from the budget, but I couldn't do it. They didn't finish the budget. We'll see you in a moment. <laughs> This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Penn Future, where we believe that every environmental victory grows the economy. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Fred, let's talk a little bit about uh, another aspect of this. Here we are, we're, we're in mid-October. The governor gives a budget message in February. I mean, we have just got through this excruciating process, and there's still these big looming uh, issues out there, not just gaming, but pensions. We have the stimulus going away. How much of a tough time do you think it is going to be? And Governor Rendell, a lame duck, give me your sense about where you think this is all going to Well, head. I can only go by my recollection of history. And remember 1990, the Hafer... Uh, Casey race yeah. when uh, Casey said the budget would be balanced when everyone knew it wouldn't be and Barbara Hafer kept complaining Governor Rendell is going to have six months of the budget year as a governor. He, uh, the new governor, will have responsibility mm -hmm. from early in January for the remainder of the budget year. Yes. Why should Governor Rendell, he's going to have no motivation to really get into the budget next yeah, year. Yeah, he's Governor Rendell. I yeah, mean, he's going to go pay. He's not I, going to I, my comment is I expect them to finesse the problems next year. For another year. year. Finesse it through, uh-oh, hey, I've not heard that one yet. That, no, wait a minute. No, I'm, I'm serious. I, I've been arguing that Rendell will be active. He could promote another income. Look, he's unabashed. 
and his arguments that we need more revenue, maybe another income tax hike proposal, Gene, maybe uh, he, he'll say we can't cut much more out. We cut $2 billion out this year. But Fred's got a good point here. I didn't... Is it, will they try to finesse it? So the, the, we got a governor's election. You know, whether we finesse it, as some have said, you kick the can down the road on certain of these other things. Look, Governor Rendell's proposed numerous taxes throughout this period. Wouldn't surprise us in the least to see more proposed next year. Of course, he's not running again, as you've pointed out. Yeah. The entire state house is up and half of the yeah. Senate is up. And, and of course, big, not many of those are interested in voting for a personal income tax or anything But the big governor's else. election. I mean, imagine, Absolutely. Fred, you're a candidate for governor, and you're going to have to get into the, can a candidate for governor next year, and we'll do some programming on this coming up, can a get, candidate for governor not get into this fiscal quagmire? Can, are they going to have to get into it and say, we're going to have more taxes, we're going to have fewer taxes, we're going to cut? How could, in this budget situation. Can you not get into this? You must get into it. And as a matter of fact, I feel somewhat critical of Tom Corbett mm -hmm. for not being into this now in a much more aggressive way, mm -hmm. into the fiscal situation and comments on the fiscal yeah. situation. The budget is over. The fiscal problems of Pennsylvania, remain. they remain. Yeah. But none of the candidates in all candor, I mean, I, I don't think that these issues have I been joined yet with any change. Democrats. Or, go ahead, go ahead. That'll have to change next year. And the reality is I don't know that any of the candidates are going to come out and say, gee, I'm proposing a tax increase. Didn't work all that well for Walter Mondale when he did it yeah. as a presidential candidate. So I don't know why any gubernatorial or candidate George would Bush, want to do that. Remember? <laughs> Read my lips. Yeah, the whole deal. So I don't, but, but I agree. I think they're going to have to become more engaged. Obviously, Attorney General Corbett has had a few other things on his plate over the last yeah, few and months. And we talked about that with exactly. the reporters. That's right. So, okay, we have a, a, a less than a minute to go. Fred, if, if you're sitting here with your, your, your crystal ball, how much will the fiscal situation of the state drive politics next year? Will it dominate everything? I think it will. And I think that now we can identify a very, very substantial budgetary shortfall going forward with the federal stimulus program going away. And, and let me say this, Terry. We're out of time. You get to say it the next time you're on the program. We'll be back next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and stay well. Fred gets the last word.